Welcome back, everybody, to Callus Invitational 3, Round 6. This is a winner's bracket match, and that means it is the second money match of the tournament. That's right. The winner here is guaranteed a top 3 finish and therefore guaranteed cash money. The loser, of course, will not be out. They'll simply be knocked down to the lower bracket, but it means in order to claw back into the money, they're going to have to win a heck of a lot more matches than they otherwise would, and it's a tough place to be. Winning here is a safe guarantee, and obviously both players want to do that. We've got ZF and ABR, who have looked like two of the strongest, sharpest players in this tour. Both just playing really clean ADV with good teams, good fundamentals, making plays. And this is just a really high quality match that I've been looking forward to all week. And I didn't get to catch it live, so I'm checking out these replays for the first time. Not knowing anything about these games, and I cannot wait to see who it is that's going to come out on top. So let's get right into it. ZF on the bottom, ABR on the top. Cloister lead against T Tower lead. I do not like Cloister lead as an in general because it is bad against both T Tower and Zapdos and Metagross, really. But Zapdos and T Tower have been the predominant leads in this tour up to this point, and they both have quite the advantage in this matchup. Cloister is fine but I do not like leading with Cloyster, and I also don't like for ZF staying in there and surfing, th since I think it's very clear that T-Tower was not going to stay in there and risk getting hit and knocked out by the surf. But yeah, ZF is not in any way trying to preserve this Cloyster. He knows that it's dead after being caught off guard with the Toxic and then the Taunt, so he's just getting what he can for Spikes down. He's going to get all three layers, but he's going to die, and ABR also gets three layers down, so there's really no advantage here for ZF. They both have three layers, but ZF is flat out down a Pokemon here. Gengar comes in, Will-O-Wisp, just the generically safe thing to do. Fine on Skarm if he stays in, fine on anything other than like a Guts Pokemon or a Charizard or something, should it switch out. And the answer seems to be that he's just going to let the Skarm take it. Thinks there'll be a switch, goes Will-O-Wisp again, there's not. Misses an opportunity there to get a Thunderbolt or something off. And ABR is going to stick around for a roar. Prompts out Swampert. Hydro Pump and roar again. That's going to drag out a T-Tower previously unrevealed. So Spike's damage adding up here. ZF trying to put a stop to it. Does not get the flinch or the crit. Therefore, roar does get off yet again. But it does not deal Spike's damage to that Pokemon, the levitating Gengar. And it does, in fact, finally prompt a, a knockout on the Skarm. The burn, that is, and that's going to bring us to a 5-5 five to five situation. Aerodactyl, a poke that we have not seen a lot of in this tour, does make an appearance for ABR briefly, but gets out of the way. Hidden power there, I doubt that's a bluff. That is probably actually HP Grass for ABR as opposed to the bluff of HP Ice. Here comes Blissey, and she takes hidden power, 8%. This is an obvious soft boil turn. It could prompt Aerodactyl, but ABR could, I was going to say ZF could switch it up and go T-Wave or Ice Beam, anticipating an aggressive play like that for ABR. And indeed, he gets a Thunder Wave off on Zapdos, greatly crippling it if it is indeed the offensive Zapdos that it looks to be. Hidden Power Grass there hits Swampert. That's not going to stick around for another one. Aerodactyl takes neutral damage from it, but takes only 20%. Hidden Power there is Bug, not HP Flying, but a very unlucky and relevant miss there for ZF, who could have KO'd that Aerodactyl with a Rock Slide, but the 90-10 damage roll does not cooperate. Sneaks in Gengar on HP Bug, follows up Ice Punch, Swampert goes down, advantage ZF now in a 5-4 situation, unrevealed for both guys, not anymore for ZF as he shows Rachi, that was the right call here, Rockside would have bounced off that, but ABR gets a miss, not as relevant of course as the ZF miss, here's a Wish, 88%, Pulls it back to Bliss, 43%, safe from absolutely anything here other than Focus Punch or Boom. And in fact, neither of those things come. It is a Will-O-Wisp attempt for the Superman-esque team of ABR. Taunt there, gets met with an Ice Beam. Definitely bulky to take the Ice Beam that well, only 26%. Will-O-Wisp again. Ice Beam again. Gengar going to take one more of those, but not a second. And of course, there's always the chance of the crit or the freeze. Blissey 
has to be careful about potentially soft-boiling here because, of course, the Gengar does have Taunt. As such, she sticks to Ice Beam here. Could have soft-boiled, but didn't know there would be a switch. Titar comes in, lives the Ice Beam. ZF fodders off his own. We've got ourselves a 4-4, and now Gengar comes in once again, looking for the knockout blow on the Titar. That prompts ABR back. Giga Drain would have been enough to kill. Titar will die to the three layers of spikes the next time it comes in, so we've got ourselves a 4-4, but it's basically a 4-3. Ice Punch comes down, fishing for a critter, full para, does find the full para at a bad time for ABR. ABR on the ropes here, Gengar very threatening in this late game. Ice Punch is a knockout. Here's Aerodactyl that arguably shouldn't be alive right now. It matters quite a bit that he is. He takes out the Gengar. We've got ourselves a 3-3, which is effectively a 3-2. The Rock Resist comes in. ABR uses his fodder now. We now have ourselves a 2-3 situation. Gengar on Rachi. Taunt is going to prevent Wish or Calm Mind, but he does oblige and go for Thunder. He finds the Para 60% chance upon connection of finding that Paralysis, and Ice Punch will be the knockout. Aerodactyl, the last hope now for ABR. Earthquake going to have to be enough. Wish the move here for Rachi. Does it have protect? Does not. He's going to pass that wish elsewhere. Elsewhere turns out to be Swampert. This is going to be a hard battle to win. There's going to have to be Hydro Pump misses. No, he's got protect. This one is going to go ZF's way. It does not look like ABR is going to be able to come back. Unless... Ooh, unless that! Oh, he gets a freeze, however. It's a crit earthquake. But he saw us! <laughs> oh my god! Wait a minute. <laughs> Does ABR rob him here? Is this a thing? Wow! Wow! How does ABR win this game? Highway robbery here. Hold up. Let's back up a few turns here. What a sequence that is. We'll start here. I can't believe the end game that we just watched. So ZF plays around the taunt, thunders this Gengar, gets paralyzed, so now he can just kill it with Ice Punch, and obviously Aerodactyl's not going to switch into Ice Punch. So there's the knockout, and he's down to just Aerodactyl. Let's really look at this situation and how bonkers it is that somehow ZF does not win in this situation. So it's only the Aerodactyl here for ABR at 80%. It has to pick one move and one move only, because it's going to be Choice Band locked. There's no move that can come even close to killing the Jirachi other than the Earthquake. He can't Rock Slide, he can't HP Bug, he can't Double Edge. It has to be Earthquake. There is no other play. So let's really look at this here. So Swampert has Protect and is at 53%. So he could maybe even live an Earthquake. He certainly is going to get one after Wish comes for the Jirachi. And then there's Blissey, who doesn't really matter here because Spikes plus Earthquake, she dies. But, like, the Pert and the Rachi here should be very, very handily enough. So what ZF could do is he could just go for Ice Punch or go for Thunder. I think the play that he actually does make is better. So he's going to live one Earthquake here. Takes a ton of damage, of course, because his Choice Band super effective. He goes Wish with the intention of passing it to Swampert. This seems absolutely the right play to me. So there's Earthquake, Rachi goes down. Now check out how ridiculous it is that ABR actually somehow comes out of this situation as the winner. So here's the Wish, there's Lefties, he's going to protect up to 92%. A ABR at this point actually says GG in the comments, this is him conceding here. And this is why folks, this is exactly why, this is a textbook example, I'm going to start linking this when I say this in my other videos. This is why you don't concede. This is why you play out the game. Don't let your pride or your ego dictate it. Just play, just click for two more turns. You lose nothing. You lose 15 seconds of your time. It's not a big deal. Suck it up and play because you might miss an opportunity. A lot of players right now in ABR shoes, especially players who are prone to tilt like a BKC or like an Eden's Embrace, would simply click the concede button here. And this is exactly why you should not concede, because wild, stupid things can and do happen, and this game is a perfect example of that. But yeah, so let's look at how ridiculous this is. He needs a critical hit right here, or I guess he could have gotten one on the following turn. 
ZF gets the freeze. Now you can argue here whether or not this was the right play because Ice Beam is never ever going to kill, whereas Hydro Pump always kills. But of course, Hydro Pump is 80 20 to hit at all. I would argue that you actually, I think ZF does make a mistake. I think you do Hydro Pump here. And this is not just me saying that because of the way that it happened. I just think it's mathematically better. Obviously, you could have Hydro Pumped and simply missed, but hear me out. So what should happen here in normal circumstances is that the Earthquake, without a crit, does not kill. It, ABR, basically, all right, I'll back it up. Ice Beam never kills, ever, pending a crit. There's no chance. There's no damage roll where Ice Beam kills. So you need to get off two Ice Beams anyway, right? Earthquake would have, at most, two opportunities for ABR, and he would need to find a crit on one of them. If you go with the Hydro Pump route, you actually give ABR one less turn to BS out. If you miss the Hydro Pump, the first one, then you're in the same position that you were in anyway because you would, if you had gone Ice Beam, you would have needed two of them anyway, right? So if you miss the first Hydro Pump and then you kill him with the second Hydro Pump, that is effectively the same as if you had just gone for Ice Beam. But if you go for the Hydro Pump and you hit the Hydro Pump, which is 80-20, then you do not give ABR a chance to crit you out. If you just hit the first Hydro Pump, this crit here on the Earthquake does not matter because ZF wins anyway. The only scenario in which the Hydro Pump play is worse is if you happen to miss both of them. Or, in this case, if you Hydro Pump miss and you get immediately crit. Those are the only two scenarios. So it's not strictly better to Hydro Pump. There are scenarios like this one where if you miss the Hydro Pump and get it immediately crit, you're screwed. But I mean, it's the same with Ice Beam, right? Like if you Ice Beam him here and get immediately uh, immediately crit, you're screwed anyway there also. So like I said, basically at the end of the day, all that talking aside, the only way that the Hydro Pump play is worse is if you miss both of them. And that's a chance you just have to take. I mean, if you're using Hydro Pump, you're obviously comfortable with the accuracy and the fact that it's going to miss some time. It's extremely, extremely mathematically unlikely to miss two 80-20s in a row. And it's one of those things where you go, you know what, dude? If it happens, it happens. But I think the upside of Hydro Pumping the first time around outweighs the Ice Beam play. I think Hydro Pump was the right play here because the overwhelming majority of the time... You're going to kill the Aerodactyl on the second turn anyway, the exact same way that you would have with Ice Beam, with the key difference being 80% of the time you're going to kill the Aerodactyl on the first turn. And that is a very, very big, very, very important upside. So as thrilling as this game was, and clearly, even with the play that ZF did make, he is overwhelmingly mathematically favored to win in this situation and absolutely got robbed i still think that at the end of the day zf did not play this late game correctly should have gone for hydro pump and at least 80 percent of the time had he done that would have gotten a different result so those are my thoughts on it. I think my little post-game ramblings there might have even been longer than the narration itself, but I hope players can take away something from that and give them something to think about in their own games. You guys can certainly, I encourage you to weigh in in the comments. Let me know if you agree or disagree with what I have to say. But like I said, I think that Hydro Pump was the right play, and I think ZF has himself to blame and luck, but at least partially himself for letting ABR steal this one. All that being said, this was only game one. ZF can still win the set. It is a best of three, and we're going to move on to game two and potentially a game three coming up next. Thumbs up if you enjoyed.